All right, good evening, scholars. Um, this lesson is going to be on history lesson three, Harriet Beecher Sow. So if you could please continue this YouTube video and I want you to open up a new tab and go to the reading for Harriet Beecher Stowe so that you can read along with me while I'm reading out loud. So while I'm reading out loud, I'll give you a second to do that. While I'm reading out loud, I would like you to follow along with your finger, with your pencil, definitely with your eyes. Um, I want you to follow along with the words while I'm reading. So you should have Harriet Beecher Stowe opened the text and we'll get started. So at the top it says abolitionist and I want to just remind you again what an abolitionist is. Um, it was somebody who fought for um, the end of slavery to free slaves um, and there's also, you'll hear maybe like the abolitionist, an abolitionist movement, um, which is just, you know, a group of people trying to make, um, their goal happen, which was to free the, to free slaves. So now that we remember what an abolitionist is, we're going to read about Harriet Beecher Stowe. Please again, follow along with my voice as you read the text. Harriet Beecher Stowe was a white abolitionist and author who was born in 1811. She wrote over 20 books, but her most famous work was Uncle Tom's Cabin, which most historians agree changed the course of history. So I just wanna stop there for a quick second and I want to um, talk about what that first little mini uh, introduction paragraph is saying. So they introduced Harriet Beecher Stowe, um, was, who was a white abolitionist. So she was a white female who was um, fighting to free slaves. And she was also an author. And she wrote um, a book that is very, very, very popular. If you've heard of it, Uncle, Tom, Uncle Tom's Cabin, excuse me. All right, let's go to the second paragraph. Please follow along with your eyes. Harriet was born in Connecticut to the strictly religious Beecher family, which was full of ministers. As a young girl, Harriet began writing while she worked as a teacher, helping out in a school that one of her older sisters started. When she was 21 years old, she moved to Cincinnati, Ohio with her family. Ohio was a free state but it was bordered by several slave states. So what that means is when it says Ohio was a free state, that means that Ohio did not have slaves, but the states around it um, were slave states. So they still believed in having slaves. And for the first time, Harriet saw slaves being traded, black families being separated and slaves being abused on plantations. A plantation is a piece of land. In Ohio, Harriet and her sisters formed the Semicolon Club, which was a literary group that fostered conversation about the contemporary issues of the time. The two primary social issues at that time were slavery and women's suffrage. It was in this club that she met her husband, Calvin Ellis Stowe, who was a staunch abolitionist himself and the couple later moved to Maine where Harriet began her career as an author. When the Fugitive Slave Law was passed in 1850, Stowe felt like she could not keep quiet about the issue of slavery any longer. As a result, she wrote the fiery book, Uncle Tom's Cabin, which was first published as a series of installments in a newspaper. However, the popular work was soon compiled into a novel and it sold thousands and thousands of copies. Okay, we're at the next paragraph. Uncle Tom's Cabin, which was the book she wrote, was based on the life and times of a slave named Josiah Henson 
and it painted a picture for the world of what life as a slave was like in America for the first time. Harriet didn't place all of the blame on Southerners or make all Blacks out to be innocent. Instead, she showed that slavery as a whole was evil and the institution itself is what made people of all different backgrounds do evil things. Many historians have called her novel the most influential novel of all time. It was translated into many languages and sold around the world. Within the United States, the book infuriated Northerners, which made them mad. Infuriated is when you're very, very angry and made them willing to go to war against the South to abolish the practice of slavery. The book's widespread circulation encouraged public conversation about slavery and was very influential in swaying public opinion, opinion against the evil practice. So I wanna stop there before it says fast fact, um, just to kind of sum it up. So the Northerners were, um, reading her book and they were so infuriated or mad by um, the things that she was talking about as far as um, how blacks were treated. Um, they supported her and they supported her views and her book so much that they wanted to go to war with the South to end slavery. Um, and just another quick fa fact, fast forward, that's the Civil War, when the North and the South fought to end slavery. But that's after, after this had happened. Okay, let's go to Fast Facts. Again, please read along with me with your eyes. Fast Fact. Stowe also was an avid supporter of the Underground Railroad. She helped harbor slaves as they, as they made their way to freedom. So I want you to think in your head because you should have done the lesson before this, or if you haven't yet, then you should after this. Um, I want you to take a couple seconds and say it in your head or say it out loud. What was the Underground Railroad? And if you don't remember or are having trouble putting it into your own words, was the Underground Railroad an actual railroad with a train, like the ones that you see today, or was it something else? Okay, so the Underground Railroad was a secret path for slaves to get from one point to the other to get to freedom. Um, and there were people that would help them along the way, um, they would escape. And so just a reminder, that's what the Underground Railroad was. It was, um, secret passageways so that slaves could get from one place to the other to become free. All right. We're on the next page at the very top. Again, please follow along with me with your eyes and something, uh, like a pencil or your finger. Stowe's so success as an author and an abolitionist allowed her to travel to Washington, D.C. to meet with President Lincoln in 1863. One story claims that Lincoln greeted her by saying, so you are the little woman who wrote the book that started this great war. She continued to be an abolitionist throughout the rest of the war. Excuse me. Um, and so basically, um, she met Abraham Lincoln, President Abraham Lincoln, in 1863. Uh, okay, third, second paragraph in the middle on the second page. In her later years, Stowe became an advocate for women's rights. An advocate, which is bolded, so it's a vocab word, is a person who stands up for a cause. She was outspoken on the topic and remained popular in many progressive circles throughout the country. In addition to slavery and women's rights, she was often asked to comment on other social issues, which shows the respect that many people had for her opinion. Although she did not give many speeches or rescue a vast number of slaves like other abolitionists did, Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote a book that impacted millions of people. The harsh realities of her novel shed light on the evils of slavery and it and its popularity allowed the American public to gain a first-hand perspective on the life of a slave. 
In this way, she had a huge impact on the push for the abolition or the end of slavery. All right, so that's the text. I want you to now go back to the folder and open the modified questions for Harriet Beecher Stowe. And um, I'm going to do another, a third video and um, just read the questions for the worksheet. All right, guys, have a good evening.